Hey guys, what is up? This is Mr. Turd and today we are going to be talking about the Dacians on the campaign. Now, the Dacians are a faction that starts pretty poor. They have a really, really tough time against Macedonians, Greeks, Thracians, Scythians, Germanians, Romans. They are just fighting everybody. So how are they really on the campaign? What should they do? What should they be doing? Let's find out, guys. Alright, here we are on the campaign map for Dacia. And let's see, how do they start? They have two settlements, two starting settlements. Parolism with 5200 people in there, that's a huge settlement, okay? And then they have another settlement with 2800 people right next to it, so they can mutually support one another, which is pretty good. It's much better than factions like Scythia, who have long distances in between them. And they start with 3000 denarii, they start making negative. Oh wait, no, 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 no. This is on very high. If you have very high taxes, they start making 600 denarii. But, if you go over to normal tax rate, just look at that. Look at that, it's poor, they are piss poor. Minus 172 denarii per turn. That sucks. If you go for a short campaign, which, let's face it, with a barbarian faction, you're probably gonna go for a short campaign, you need to take out Macedon and Thrace. These are both sort of difficult factions. Thrace uh, is not very difficult right here. Thrace is really not very difficult. In the in the early game, they are just spamming skirmishers. The Macedonians, these are going to be your challenge. I would honestly just rush these guys and take them out as soon as possible. Anyway, they are landlocked. You have no ports, so trade is going to be very little. You're going to be making very little money. I mean, hello? Minus 172 denarii? Yeah, very low money. So... They then they are surrounded by Germania, Scythia, Thrace, Macedon. You're gonna have to deal with the Greeks, you're gonna have to deal with the Romans very early on. So this is not a good position to be in, you know. Yes, their city is right here within the mountains, it's on a valley right there. However, you're not gonna have enough money to protect all of your passes on the mountains, so that's gonna be very, very, very difficult. You know, they start with access to archers though. Archers are very good, especially early game when everybody else is quite unarmored. Uh, but that is it. This is how they start, guys. This is how they start. So what should you do with them? You are landlocked, so you're gonna need a port. So I would rush right over here to Thessalonica. So you take Bilazora right here with this little army. You took two units from Poralism here to support you. And that's what you're gonna be doing. Will you go for Aquincum? I would probably go for Aquincum. Yes. However, you can just decide not to and stay here because a Quincum is a very small settlement. It's not going to be making a, a lot of money. Anyway, here you rush the Thracians, uh, you rush the Macedonians, get Bilazori, get Thessalonica, get Larissa, get Corinth. They will be throwing everything they have at you. But in the early game, they have maybe Lancer Cavalry. They have the two Macedonian Cavalries they, they start with. Those are formidable units, so you're going to have to be careful about that. But you're gonna be able to deal with it with a little bit of smart care and careful positioning on the battle map. And um, so you're gonna be passing that uh, that challenge for sure. And then you have to see um, to see the Thracians off as well after you deal with the Macedonians. And for me, that is what it is. You just do an, you get an alliance with the Thracians. You attack the Macedonians. You can do it the other way around. You can even go for the Germanians. You can even go for the Scythians. But I will go down here. These regions are rich. They have the, the statue of Zeus right here. So you definitely want to get down there. And take out the Macedonians as soon as possible. Anyway. Then let's go for what's good and what's bad about, the, about these Dacians right here. So what is good about them? I honestly only found one thing that is good. If you take Athens, or as soon as you take you take Athens, you're gonna be able to get access to the chosen swordsmen. They're a pretty good unit, especially for early to mid game, and you can get them within 20 turns. That's it. Also, you you will probably be able to get them in Poralism fairly soon because you're almost uh, getting this settlement up to the next level, and you're gonna be able to get the next level of um, of barracks, which is going to be the Hall of Heroes, and you're going to be getting the Chosen Swordsman. So this is the unit. Alright, they're pretty, pretty good. F 
for for that stage in the game so within 20 20 turns you're gonna be pumping out those guys it's gonna be nice and then there's they just have one other good thing i think that's the, the replayability you can just go for campus city you can go for the thracians you can go for the germanians and as i said before you can go all of these different directions um but in my opinion the best one is to go against the Macedonians right away. Anyway, so what is bad? So first off, we're gonna have to talk about the temples because it's something that has to do with the temples and it is public order. They only get up to 25% public order bonus. So Hebalasis, we have here 15% public order bonus due to happiness. This is a pretty good bonus right here. Morale bonus due to, troop, to troops trained on the city. A plus one morale bonus is already good. A plus two morale bonus is excellent, okay? So... Definitely, this one is a good one. Every single one of them will give you 15% public order bonus due to happiness. So you're probably going to be picking this one a lot. And then you have the Sacred Circle of Zalmoxis. And it's also 15% plus one weapons, plus one heavy weapons, plus one, plus one armor. This is also a decent one, but I think I would rather have the morale. And then you have the Sacred cir Circle of Bendis. That gives you pretty much plus three food production but then you're gonna have to bend over backwards badoons you know bend bend this anyway whatever i'm gonna stop that in, in order to actually resolve the problems that are gonna come from having this improved farms and food production you know while this gives you some money yes it will also give you more population and it, it might get difficult trying to deal with all of those people in your cities you know, all of that squalor so probably probably not anyway yeah then they have the the tavern which is gonna go for the next level of tavern that gonna give you 10% public order bonus. It's the Bardic Circle, and it's gonna give you 10 more percent. So you're gonna end up with just a 25% boost in public order. Again, not very good for late game. Very poor starting position, you know, because you have a lot of enemies around you, and because your economy starts really, really poor, you can only go up to tier three cities. Here we go, tier three cities, only up to minor city. And then you have a mediocre ro roster. Yes, you can get access to the chosen warband right there, to the, to the chosen swordsman right here in Athens, really nice and early. However, as soon as you start going up to mid game, late game, most factions around you are gonna have better infantry units, especially if we're talking about the Romans or the Seleucids that are definitely r r very close to you here in Sardis. Um, the Greeks, for example, so you do need to watch out for that uh, for sure And then they have a very very hard late game This is a faction that you're supposed to be playing a short campaign with not a Not a long campaign with and as such they are going to be so so difficult in a long campaign Especially if you if you overextend, you know your units are not going to be able to compete late game um, You know you're gonna have all sorts of problems of uh, public order so definitely a horrible faction for a um, long campaign as well as the other barbarian factions. They do have access to siege equipment, which is a huge advantage for these guys. But that's pretty much it. So what is the tier for these guys? I I'm going to put the Dacians and I'm not going to beat around the bush right here. I'm going to put them on the D tier. I don't think they can, even be a C they can even be a C tier right here. Simply because they start so poor you know they then they can boom a little bit if you capture greece here but then they will immediately have to fight the greeks the romans and that's going to be very difficult for a faction such as dacia with a mediocre roster all right d tier for the dacians guys if you disagree with anything Please let me know in the comments below. If you if you think I forgot something or that I should be adding some more information, please let me know what. Please let me know why. Crit constructive criticism is always welcome, guys. And if you have ever done a Dacian campaign, yeah, please leave me your experiences. I have done one and I captured Macedon over here. I went to war against the Greeks over here. It was a very difficult war. And then I took out Thrace at the same time. It was very, very fun. So that is my experience with the Dacians. Anyway, guys, if you like the video, do leave a like. If you are still here and you're not still subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel because there's way more content like this out there on my channel. You guys can go and check it out. And uh, yeah, I have been Mr. Turd and I am signing off. See you guys on the next video.
hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitch, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much.